Oh boy, did the Montreal Canadiens get kind of debated when acquiring this player. Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm recording this video on Saturday morning. I do have a trip later, and we're not going to be back till Tuesday, so there is a pre-scheduling that I have to do, and this video is being recorded days before it's going to be uploaded, which means that I'm kind of doing a little bit of a risky thing because if this player or any other player on the Canadians ends up getting traded between now and when this video is going to be uploaded, then there's no real reason to be making this video in the first place, but... I don't know, you gotta go out there, take a risk sometimes, and this is what happens when you go out on trips. Let's talk today about a player on the Montreal Canadiens that has been so bad, just holistically this year. He was not good, the fan sentiment was terrible for this guy, his on-ice play was not great, but recently, he's gone out there and actually proved himself as being a lot more useful on this team than he showed off as he was at the beginning of the season. So much to the point that you might actually have yourselves teams that are looking to trade for this guy by the time the deadline comes and goes. Let's see if that ends up happening here. Let's go over onto an article on The Athletic published by Pierre Lebrun earlier last week. Take a look at this piece right here. Lebrun, buyers, sellers, the Timo Meyer trade market, and more NHL rumblings. There is a little section in this piece done on the Montreal Canadiens. Link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this entire article yourself if you do have The Athletic, but these screenshots were posted onto the Canadian subreddit, which is why I'm going out there and making a video about this, because you can now technically see this without having The Athletic. Lebrun talks about different players on the Habs. He talks about Edmondson. He talks about Sean Monaghan. Drewen, but the last name is the one that I wanted to go over here. Pending UFA winger Evgeny Dadanov has played really well over the past few weeks, arguably as a top three forward on the team since all the injuries happened, and he's a guy whose stock went from next to zero on the trade market to the point where there could be possibilities closer to March 3rd. After some contenders strike out in bigger names, they may circle to Montreal on Dadanov. I wonder about Dallas and Winnipeg as possibilities. Now, Dadanov is the name we're going over here, and this has always been one of the more polarizing figures in the NHL world. Admittedly, for me, it's been because of a certain YouTube series done by a superb general manager where Dadanov was seen as the ultimate villain, but aside from that, Dadanov has had a really strange career ever since getting drafted in 07 by the Cats. He was a Florida Panthers prospect for a few years, he made his way into the Florida Panthers system, was not fantastic, and found himself back in Russia just after a few years. There, he established himself as a legitimate goal-scoring talent for SKA St. Petersburg before returning to the NHL in 2017-2018. At this point, he was on top of the world, playing for the Florida team that drafted him all those years ago and posting up three 20-goal seasons, including a 70-point year in 2018-19. But, bearing a few moves, he had gotten sent over to the Ottawa Senators and eventually the Vegas Golden Knights, where he was a 43-point-in-78-game guy last year. 20 goals, 23 assists, really not bad for a guy making $5 million against the cap. He signed this contract back in 2020, and it goes on till 2023. He is an expiring UFA, as the article said. But, when Evgeny Dadanov was traded from Vegas over to Montreal in exchange for Shea Weber, this was the cap-saving move that the Golden Knights tried to go out there and do, a lot of Canadians fans, myself included, said, hey, this is a pretty good pickup. Mostly because Evgeny Dadanov, if he goes out there in Montreal, gets, let's say, I don't know, let's be on the more conservative side, 10 to 15 goals and maybe 35 points. That is a pretty good trade rental deadline piece that another team could shell out maybe a third or a fourth round pick for that the Canadians could use. They got out of the Shea Weber contract and they got themselves a guy they could trade away for some good bait next season. Win-win, right? But Evgeny Dadanov with the Canadians had not really had any success, and earlier on in the year, he really was struggling hard. He wasn't scoring goals. He didn't have that same magic to his game that allowed him to get 70 points with the Panthers all those years ago, and it all of a sudden took such a down-in-the-dumps turn for Dadanov and his reputation amongst Canadians fans that... A lot of people were saying, yeah, there's no way we're going to be able to trade this guy. Like, really? Look at how he's playing right now. Look at the points. It's not there. There's no way a team goes out there and gets this type of a player for any sort of future asset that the Canadians could want. But then you had the injuries, and everything sort of started to go wrong for many of these Canadians that you got guys like Cole Caulfield, you got guys like Uri Slavkovsky, they're all sidelined, there are more players like Monaghan who have taken some time off, Drew Ann is in that mix as well. 
And Dadunov, as a result, got a little bit of a bigger opportunity. And if you take a look at his point production, I mean, he's got four assists in his last five games, five assists in his last 10 games. So he has sort of gone a little bit higher up there in terms of his point production the last little while. His total point number on 2023... 17 points in 46 games played on pace for a total of 27 points. He only has four goals on the year, which is a really big drop-off from everything he had done ever since returning to the NHL. I mean, even in Ottawa, where he had a pretty bad year, he had 13 goals in 55 games. This season, he's on pace for six goals. So, all things considered, Dadanov has had a pretty bad year. But when it comes to a lot of these trades and what these teams are looking for at the trade deadline, what you really want is somebody that helps you out in the immediate short-term future. And how do you look at the short-term future? Well, you look at the short-term past. This is where Dadanov shines, and this is why Pierre Lebrun writes that if teams are going out there looking for wingers like Timo Meyer or Tarasenko, some of these guys are still in the market, others are not, and you miss out on the big-name free agent guy, maybe Dadanov is the guy you want to go to instead. And there is a labeled out target in Winnipeg, and there also is a target in Dallas. And what I wanted to do was ask the question, which players do you think these teams would be able to go out there and shell out in exchange for a player like Dadanov? If it's a draft pick, okay, cool, you can get a draft pick and you give Kent Hughes another opportunity at selecting a good player in the draft. But if it's a prospect, somebody they already have in their system, maybe a third or a second round pick that they're not too high on anymore, let me know your thoughts. There are some pretty good prospects in the Winnipeg Jets system that I definitely do think are worth looking at, but the ones that are really, really good, of course, you're not going to touch Cole Perfetti, you're not going to touch Brad Lambert or Rutger McGroarty. I do like Elias Salomonson quite a bit. I also do like Daniel Torgerson. There are a few other guys that have popped in here that I do think are interesting to think about in some sort of a Dadanov trade. And if you go over to the Dallas Stars and their draft history, man, do they have some guys that I do think are great. Christian Cairo, second round pick from last year. I like him a lot. A lot of defensive deficiencies, but he's a very good offensive mind. Ayrton Martino is a guy I think could be a very good steal from the third round in 2021. They also have themselves the best hands of the 2020 draft in Antonio Stranges. There definitely are some names that I do think would intrigue me in some sort of a middling prospect for a rental player type of deal, but of course... It really is up to the teams in question here as to whether or not they would want to make this type of a trade. If I'm Kent Hughes and I'm offered Antonio Strong just for Dadanov, I take that. Especially considering where Dadanov was earlier in the year, so much to the point that now he's actually being considered as a potential trade target. Maybe I'm being a little bit too high on the price, though. Is a second, third round draftee from a prior year a good enough return? Or is it really high for a player like that enough? Is it really only justifiably a fourth or a fifth round pick that gets it done? Who really knows? You can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you are a Winnipeg Jets or a Dallas Stars fan, what are your thoughts on Evgeny Dadanov coming over to your team as a potential middle six scoring threat? Add it onto your wings that had some really good numbers in prior years, but had fallen off quite a bit in Montreal. He's been good recently, but you kind of have to go out there and hope that that good recently expands and extends itself into a good in the playoffs type of timeline as well. So what a lot of Canadians fans thought was impossible earlier on in the year seems like a legit possibility now. So you can let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. What are your opinions about Dadanov and the trade idea sending him over to Dallas or Winnipeg? I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.